the this problem again we read the requirements first and we are required to prepare production report for Belmont company and we are when we look at the body of the data we realize that process cost then Belmont company produces calendars in the one process department direct materials are introduced at the beginning of the process conversion costs uh, apply uniformly throughout the process okay so the direct materials introduced at the beginning means that a hundred percent of the raw materials would have gone into the product although it is in working process okay there's no percentage for that conversion cost which is the overhead and the direct labor are applied uniformly through the process right so you need that so you can use a percentage for the working process okay the weighted average method of process costing is used data for the year as follows avco method being used tells us that uh, we can lump everything together and find just find an average of it. If we are using five four, the order in which the units go into production would be significant. Uh, we would have to keep them in their respective periods. Okay. Now, the first thing we should do when working a problem like this is to account for the physical units. Whether you are asked to do that or not, you always account for the physical units, right? So the beginning working process is 22,500, let's see, and we started into production in the period 100. 30,000 started in current period around 30,000. So when we add the two together, we have around 52,000 units in process during that period. Okay, so we have to account for it. How the units are accounted for? Again, these are physical units. The units completed and transferred out was 124,000. And the ending working process is 28,500, right? Um, usually how you do go about this is you take the 152 from here and you put it in here. And uh, either one of these figures, you may not be given it and they are calculated as a balancing figure. Okay, in this case, we are given both of them, so we don't have a problem now once these two balances you are able to go ahead with the rest of your course sheet next step is to calculate the equivalent units and you can do it in a table like this you take the, the physical units from here and you include them here and then you calculate the equivalent units for the materials and the conversion notice you do not have equivalent units for the total what you have is um, physical units right so the 124,000 that was completed and transferred out we would that those would be at 100 percent and um, you, they would have the entire number going in here. The working process, however, is not so, right? We have 28,500. Although we are not given a percentage for the material, we were told that all of it went into the process at the beginning of the period. That's why we can put the all of the raw materials here. And the conversion however only 60 percent has gone in as yet 
So we find 60% of this, and we get 17,100 equivalent units. Add them down, and we'll get the 152,500 for materials, okay. and 141,100. Now this will only equal this if 100% of the materials is going in at the beginning of the process, okay? And uh, if we add these two together, we will not get this, right? Okay, so that does not balance anything. There's just two separate columns of figures. Okay, the next step is to account for the cost. The total cost first. In the beginning working process, we had 51,900. Put it in here. And the conversion cost, 20,174. We put it on the conversion. Then we add these two and we get this figure here. As the total cost of the beginning working process. The amount that is added this period, we have them here for direct materials, 430, we put it in. And conversion cost, 310, we put it in. So we get, uh, when we add these two, we will get a cost account for of 812,074. Okay, so this is the cost that we have to account for in our production report. All right, this amount was the cost of the work in progress brought forward from the last period, and we added on this amount this period, so the total cost is $812.74. Next step is to divide the cost by the equivalent units to get the cost per equivalent unit. Okay, the cost per equivalent units is equal to the total cost, that is total cost of the material and the total cost of the conversion, not this total here. Because you don't know the figure for here. Like I said, this is not an equivalent unit up here, right? So we divide it by the equivalent units. So 481,900 from here divided by 152,500. We get $3.16 per unit of raw material. Right? So $3.16 raw material went into every unit, equivalent unit. When we divide the 331.74 by the equivalent units up here, we get $2.34. Right? Like I said, we do not add these two and get 550 here. The 550 will not be significant, right? These are the two figures that we're going to use for the equivalent units. So, lady cost per equivalent unit. And lastly, we have the analysis of the course, in which we are going to account for the course of E12. The course should be in the ending work in progress and in the completed and transferred units. Okay? So we take the equivalent units here, 28,500 for materials. And we multiply it by the amount we got here, three dollars and sixteen cents, and we get ninety thousand and sixty. Okay, and we do the same thing with the seventeen thousand one hundred equivalent units for conversion course in the end work process. We multiply it by two dollars and thirty four cents per, and we get forty thousand and fourteen. Right, and we the complete and transferred out would be one twenty four thousand 
multiply by 316 we have 391840 and again the same 124000 multiply by 234 we 29160 so we add these down we get the was here and when we add these across it should equal this okay if it doesn't equal that then we would not have accounted for our course here so the course accounted for 8 12 and 74 okay all right if you didn't get all that in one take you can rewind the video and look at it again all right it takes more than one shot at this to get this